And I was just about to leave and then I realized, oops, I don't have a video. You need to watch this for tonight. Uh, so here it is. Um, remember we're putting 5-1 and 5-2 together. So we're gonna go through both. Uh, read the essential understanding, definition of rate of change, change in dependent or change over change in the independent variable. Okay, dependent, remember, which one is dependent? Y, the independent is X. Okay, because it whatever we plug in for X tells us what we get for Y. Okay, so um, the table shows the distance a band marches over time. Is the rate of change in distance with respect to time constant? So as the distance is increasing, is it increasing at the same sort of rate that the time does? Okay. So we recognize that the change in distance is going to be over the change in time. Remember, this is the dependent variable. This is the independent. So we find out, hey, look, they're all 260 over 1. Every, sec every minute, we walk another 260 feet. So it means it's the same. Uh, and then it says, what does the rate of change represent? It represents the distance the band marches per minute. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, there's not a lot I can say about that. Okay. Uh, rate of change and slope are the same thing. It's the vertical change over the horizontal change, or as we say, the rise over the run. So what we do, just like you see from this picture, we are going to figure out how it changes up and down first. Okay, so we do this part first. All right, and then we do the run. Okay, so the red part is the rise, and the blue part is the run. So we're going to figure out up and down first, and then left to right. Okay, so each time it goes up one, or sorry, it goes up 260 and over 1. Up 260 over 1. Up 260 over 1. That's how we find the slope or the rate of change. Okay. Finding the slope using the graph. Okay, so what we're looking for is, you see how this dot right here is on this line. So we're looking for the distance from this dot to this dot. That's going to be the top number. And then we're going to figure out the distance from this point to this point. Okay, so we're right here. So we're going to go up one, up two. Okay. And we're going to put it into a fraction. And now we're going to move from here. One, two, three, four, five. So the slope is two fifths. Okay. Here we're moving from this dot to this dot. So we're going to go down this part and then we're going to go from here over to here so from this part over down here is down two we put it into a fraction and we're going to go over one two three four five six which is the same thing as negative one third okay. we're going to always simplify We're always going to simplify our slopes, okay? Okay, I was afraid I lost it. All right, so now here's the slope formula. Uh, the slope is the rise over the run, which is the two, uh, the two y values subtracted from each other over the two x values. Okay, now remember, the x values are the first number in the ordered pair. So if we're going to have two ordered pairs, then this is going to be x1 and this is going to be x2. This one's going to be y1, and this one's going to be y2. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. These are commas. Okay. So we're going to put them in that order. The slope of the line through 1, 3 and 4, negative 1. So this is y1, and this is y2. So we're going to do negative 1 minus 3. Or we're going to do 3 minus a negative 1. If I do negative 1 minus 3 or I do 3 minus negative 1. Okay. I'm going to have a fraction. 
The other one, if I take this one, I do negative 1 minus 3, then I have to do 4 minus 1. But if I do this one, 3 minus a negative 1, then I have to do 1 minus 4. So you see how I have to be consistent. Okay, so negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So that is the slope. Okay, this one would be 4 over negative 3, which is also. Notice that the answers are the same. Okay. Don't change into mixed numbers. Okay, keep it as an improper. All right. Okay. Uh, what is the slope of each line? I want you to go ahead and pause it. See if you can use those formulas to figure them out. Okay. This is a horizontal line, which has a slope of zero. So any line that is horizontal will have a slope of zero because the y values are the same. Hopefully you notice that this is a 2 and this is a 2 which means the top number is going to be 0. Okay? This is a vertical line which has no slope. Look at the x values. Oops. Look at the x values. They're the same. Which means the bottom is going to be zero, which is not possible. Okay? Okay, four types of slopes positive, negative, horizontal, and vertical, undefined, zero, positive, and negative. Okay, you might want to pause it. Okay, that's section one, slope. Section two is about what's called direct variation. Okay, direct variation. Uh, is a relationship that can be represented by a function in this form. You see this? This is what you're going to get to know in direct variation. y is equal to k times x, where k is not allowed to be 0. k is called the constant. Remember, people in math don't worry about spelling, so we use the letter k for the word constant, k instead of c. I don't know how to spell. I don't it's okay. I know the letter X and the letter Y. Okay. All right. So, a direct variation. Remember, in order to identify a direct variation, we have to put it in this form. Y is equal to K times X. So we have to get Y by itself. So if that's the case, I want to get rid of the 4X, so I'm going to subtract it. So that's going to give me 5y is equal to negative 4x. My formula says y equals, so I have to divide everything by 5. So my equation now says this, negative 4 fifths x. Yes, this is a direct variation because it looks like this. What is the constant? The k is negative 4 fifths. It's the number in front of x. Okay. Number in front of x is k because that's what it says right there. Okay. Now, suppose y varies directly with x and y is equal to 35 when x equals 5. What is the direct variation equation and what is the value of y when x equals 9? All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to set up the equation. We're going to start with y equals kx. We know what y is, we know what x is. So we're going to plug those two things in. See, simple. y is 35, so we plug it in. x is 5, so we plug it in. Now we're going to solve for k. Hey, look at that. We divide both sides by 5. k equals 7. What direct variation equation? Look what they do. They rewrite the situation. y equals 7x. That's the direct variation equation. This right here is the direct variation. Okay, the direct variation equation. Right? This is simply the constant. Okay? So now, since we know that, what does y equal when x equals 9? So we plug it in. 
we plug in 9, 9 times 7 is 63. So the value of y is 63. We solve the equation, we solve for the equation so that we can solve for y. Okay. Um, let's see, where are we at? Oh, I got a problem. I have to pause. All right, I'm just going to keep going. We'll deal with this at the end. Uh, weight on the moon, y, varies directly with weight on Earth, x. So y is what you weigh on the moon, x is what you weigh on Earth. A person who weighs 100 pounds on Earth weighs only 16.6 .6 pounds on the moon. It's called a diet. Okay, it's called the moon diet. All right, if you weigh 100 pounds on Earth, you're going to weigh 16.6 .6 pounds on the moon. So we have y is equal to kx. I'm almost done. I know it's almost 11 minutes, but let's hurry. Uh, y is equal to 16.6. We need to find k, and x, or the weight on Earth, is 100. Okay, so k is going to equal 16.6 .6 divided by 100. So 0 0.166. So there, here's the equation. y is equal to 0.166x. Right? So if I'm one pound on Earth, I'm 0 0.166 on the moon. If I weigh 50, then I would multiply those two together. So the graph is going to be this process of like plugging in some numbers. So we know that 100 is 16.6, .6, so 200 would be 33.2, and so on and so forth, okay? Okay, so the graph of the direct variation will look like this. It will always pass through 0, 0, okay? Direct variations will always go through 0, 0, and the k is the same thing as the slope. If k is positive, it's going to go up and down like this. If k is negative, it's going to go like that. You can pause it if you need to. I want to finish. Okay, write a direct variation for this table. For the data in the table at the right, does y vary directly with x? If it does, write an equation for the direct variation. I want you to look at this one, see what you can figure out, okay? All right? Hopefully, this is okay. Um, you're going to have to ask questions because I don't think I'm going to put this up on Edpuzzle for right now. Um, and then one more thing to mention, I'm going to add a new, another video about sequences. And it's going to be an assignment. Part of it will be an assignment that will be part of a grade. And I think I might use it as a project grade. Okay, So it'll be basically a quiz because quizzes and projects go together. So uh, keep your eye out for that. I'm going to make that in probably the next day or so. All right. Sorry, it's 13 minutes, but it's two sections, so seven and a half minutes a section, that's good, all right? You need to watch section one, and then 10 minutes later, watch section two. But I'm telling you this at the end of the video, so it doesn't matter. All right, I'm done. See ya.